we'll have more bandwidth so that we can see the peasants hob you know hobbling around or they're there with boils on them or people are throwing water out of windows onto their heads but i think we'd have more bandwidth to sort of throw in a lot of the a lot of that kind of daily life side of medieval living in a castle that is just brilliant to see <laughs> Hi, I'm Simon Bradbury at Firefly Studios and I'm a designer. I've worked for 20 years and my first project was Stronghold, Stronghold 1. Boringly, it's Stronghold. Uh, it was our initial title as a studio and we just got, everything was new. All the ideas were new. We would throw ideas in and, and laugh about them and kind of go, yep, throwing cows, we're doing that, check. <laughs> Burning people, check torture devices so you know after that we've kind of thrown so much stuff in and then the projects after that we were looking for more things mm -hmm. but it was never quite it's never quite the same as a blank sheet of paper an, an initial title you, you you've just got a blank piece of paper and you can just throw the kitchen sink in mm -hmm. and we did and it was fun and funny um, and then after that we, we're kind of evolving and polishing the gameplay uh, but you never and we can still do crazy stuff but you, you know, it's never quite as blank canvas as it is for the very first one. So with Stronghold and with running Firefly, I've definitely had yeah. to be a lot more kind of detail, atten you know, attention to detail focused. Yeah. Initially, I had the freedom just to program and design stuff. Yeah. Obviously now at Firefly, I try and do as much of that as possible, and I do, but I still, I've also got responsibilities for the company and the employees and to the brand itself and to do lots of other things that are, um, you know, they're, they're interesting, but they're not exactly what I was doing when I first set out. Well, the, the shows and the trips are always, are always um, fun. They're always really hard work, but really fun, possibly because they're such hard work, I suppose. Um, but actually, I mean, I'd like, I mean, I, one of the kind of perks of doing Stronghold is not only do we get to go and look around loads of castles and stuff, which I still love, uh, but also like we go to various places where they have, have taken old medieval buildings and just brought them all to like the same place, and you know they put them all in the field. So there's some places now that look like a little medieval village. They've got stockpiles and granaries and houses and markets, and just being able to like walk around and just see those things as a job, and usually go to the pub afterwards, yeah. is a is a <laughs> is definitely some of my favourite moments. I, I suspect most game devs, you know, smaller ones especially, have got their own vibe, but I think we definitely do. Um, everyone here generally likes, likes history and also um, beer. And I think <laughs> one of the things, you know, that's, we, we, we go and we look around castles and stuff like that, but also there's ale in Stronghold, so there's a lot of heavy-duty research goes on around that particular resource. Interestingly, I think when we first started out, it, we had a blank canvas and it, it was any idea whether it's throwing a, a dead cow or, or torture devices we could just put it in but we it, there were big picture ideas i think for me the future of strong the exciting thing is i think we're going to be able to kind of zoom in on a lot more detail not just graphically but also on the simulation side i think where i would really like to go with it is a lot more kind of visual depth and kind of gameplay depth There'd be a, maybe a little bit more simulation, but a lot more of the detail could come from actually, um, rather than just the bigger picture idea, it, it could be seeing the kind of the way people lived a little bit more, being able to throw that in without changing the gameplay around too much. In the future, I think we'll have more bandwidth so that we can see the peasants hob, you know, hobbling around or they're there with boils on them or people are throwing water out of windows onto their heads, all of that stuff which is funny in a not very nice kind of way. Um, but I think we'd have more bandwidth to sort of throw in a lot of, the, a lot of that kind of daily life side of medieval living in a castle that is just brilliant to see. If you, you know, that's what I'd like to be able to do, is to be able to depict the daily life in a castle visually. Not so much that in a gameplay sense, although that could be in it, I think it would be just really nice just to be able to look at a castle 
and see people going around in a lot more detail about their daily lives. I think what's interesting is that we've kind of been on a journey. Stronghold One was a blank canvas. Yeah. Um, and then we had, we had various publisher um, contracts to do the, the sequel. Everyone, the sequel's always hard. And then we did an even harder Stronghold 3. We've done very strong. So we, but we've kind of, in a way, been through that, the, tricky t the, the tricky album years. Yeah. And now I think we actually have got some great ideas. And also, I think, where we are as a company, we're much more sound footing. And so we've got the financial resource and also, I think, we know what mistakes not to make going forward. I also think a lot of the tech is getting so easy to use now that we can do a lot more, I think, you know, we can have a lot more ambition in terms of the way we can depict medieval street life, for example, going forward. And that's an exciting thing. Firefly began when, uh, well, actually, Eric and I set up Firefly. We didn't leave Impressions so much as Impressions left us. Impressions got sold um, and so a lot of, the, a lot of, the kind of our working practices were going to change and we might have had to move. We, we just decided it was time at that point. Eric and I had worked really closely transatlantically mm -hmm. um, and we decided it was time to take the big step and kind of set our own studio. We were, we were got enough experience, uh, we got enough games beneath, behind our belts, so we just thought, yeah, it's time. Um, Eric came over to London and we made the decision to make the game that we thought was actually the most natural game following on from we'd been working on Caesar 1, 2, 3, a Roman city builder and Lords of the Realm which was a, a early days turn-based stroke real-time RTS and we thought well let's just make the game that would sit nicely between them a kind of in-depth castle building game that has it's an RTS and a city builder combined and we just thought great there's no real no one's really doing castle games right now mm -hmm. we love castles these are the games we make it was just such an easy decision for us to make we'd, we'd always done city builders mm -hmm. and we'd done turn-based rts type games yeah. and then we, we i was eric and i were talking and we kind of went castles and we thought yeah castle a city builder but a city builder and rts combined oh yeah. that sounds you know interesting yeah it also sounds really hard work, but it, it turned out to be really interesting. And I mean, castles have got such a, um, an amazing depth of, of things that you can simulate. Sides to, you know, there's the building of a st structure, there's the management side of it, there's the attacking of castles, and then there's the whole kind of like loads of stu stupid medieval stuff that, you know, you can hang off a, a castle game as well. It was, it was just a brilliant kind of... Um, canvas on which for us to play. It, 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 we didn't think it was great. It turned out to be, a, you know, we, we, we did do too much in the game. We probably still do put too much into games, um, but we just get excited and carried away. And um, we didn't quite realize at the time that, that there would be quite so much hard work in it. I mean, I guess we should have done because we were trying to take an RTS and a city builder, which, which usually are two yeah, yeah. different games and kind of splutch them together yeah. and then the big problem obviously is is pathfinding because you normally in, a, in an rts game the pathfinding set and mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about it whereas we're always putting little paths you know blocks in people's ways and people are building castles as well the walls are getting knocked down yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a it's a bit of a technical challenge Great. yeah i mean i mean i think there's always wild moments I mean, this was in, in 99, 2000s, 2001. So we were, you know, we worked really hard, but because we kind of worked hard, I mean, we were working really long hours, almost round the clock, we were round the clock, in fact, for the last week, but all really long hours for, for long periods of time. We got used to just basically, um, and, we, and the team knew each other. It was a small team and we were very um, tight. Um, we could and did throw things in. So, for example, we decided we didn't have fire in the game until literally about three weeks beforehand. And we just thought, let's put a fire in the game because that'd be really cool. Yeah. And so we did, you know, which then led to loads of bugs quite predictably. Yeah. But it added, it would have been a lot, you know, not quite the same without having the fire in there, I think. And so the, the burning 
Well, we always had boiling oil, but we didn't have the pitch, which, okay. and that turned out to be a genius idea. Being able to light a pitch is a really, really strong defensive technique, and it looks really cool when you do it. It's so satisfying when you can light up a, a, a pot and a, a big area of pitch, and you've designed it well, so it then kind of like, like a fuse goes all the way around the map, and then all of a sudden, that big army that thought they were safe are now completely toast. I mean, the Crusades is a uh, really, really fascinating period of, of, of history. And I think we quite, one of the things with Stronghold was we, with Stronghold 1, is we, tried, we, were, we were attracted to the sort of brutality of medieval warfare and the, and the kind of pain and humour implicit in medieval daily life. Yeah. And going to the Crusades, again, had that brutality. I mean, the fight, the the conditions people marched for, lived in over there, were at times quite, you know, horrific, really. Um, and so that, that kind of attracted us to it. But the, the reason I think we went with, to the Crusades was not was partly the history. It's, it's an, it, there's not many other places you can go in the world that have that, have that sort of medieval yeah. side to them. So um, the, the whole of that kind of area of the Middle East is littered with castles, Crusader castles, and Arabic fortifications, it's got battles, it's got history, it's got figures on both sides. Um, also, I think it was a really interesting extension of gameplay for us because we decided that it takes the basic stronghold idea, which is castle and you've got to feed your castle and your people with apples and mm -hmm. pigs and whatever, and then you need wood, obviously, mm -hmm. and stone and iron. But it also, it gives you a slightly different gameplay mechanic because in the desert, most of it is sand where you can't grow apples and wheat. So it, it allowed the oasis mechanic, which basically went, you're fighting over f and for control of small oases in the desert, which, which, which concentrates the strategy a little bit more. So it doesn't change the gameplay, but it makes you play the game in a very different way. We, at the time, we were... Uh, because it had proven, obviously, Stronger One proved very successful. Um, and so Take Two, who we were being published with at the time, were most happy and most keen for us to get working straight away onto, onto, a, um, onto an extension. Yeah. And so um, straight after the, I think, the, the Christmas when it had come out and done very well, we were, you know, they were on the phone and going, what can we do? And so we just set something up then which was... Um, a, quite a short year-long contract to kind of then do something on top of the Stronghold One engine in a different setting, the desert, yeah. different sets of campaigns, some new units. But what was really nice for, for us is that is that we we could take a game that was already fairly well polished and not completely bug-free, but we we had been working through the bugs yeah. and patching it, and then spend another year on it to make it super super polished and. Add the, as well as adding the extra mechanics, because we didn't really change the mechanics other than adding skirmish play, which was the main thrust in that. Um, we didn't really add too many new mechanics, which for us is quite unusual. <laughs> no, I mean, we're, we are amazed and obviously delighted that, it's, that Stronghold and Crusader have got such, you know, staying power. Um, and. I think partly it's because I think so much love and attention to detail went into them, partly because they're different, but also I think because, bizarrely, I think because they were 2D games, I think that, that, that those high quality 2D graphics don't tend to date as well yeah. as 3D graphics. So I think that's, that's helped them have staying power. Um, but no, I just think, I think that there was so much love and care and attention to detail and passion go into them that I think that kind of shows through in any game. If it's going to have staying power, it needs to have had that particularly kind of passionate birth, I think. Yeah, no, I, I think the, 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 the game's voice, we didn't set out to do that, but it was naturally always going to be that way yeah. because there are so many influences on us growing up, you know, comedies, shows, not naming any names, but some obvious ones. Um, but, but also, just because it's, it's so, the game, you know, the period is so cruel, so bleak in lots of ways, that you, the only way to kind of present it is by using humour. 
and so um, that just came naturally really and it was again it, it just it's it's fun to do it that way so why not do it the fun way so uh, as a studio we've changed a lot over the over the years we, we've started out with a classic publisher deal where a publisher would advance us money and then we would have to deliver milestones and um, and then we would get paid on delivery and then if we're lucky and the game makes money we get paid under royalty so as we've gone through and developed um, we've had we have had ups and downs like any game studio I think game studios go to the wall quite often mm -hmm. because they're not run financially that well or because of things happen I mean we've certainly had incidents happen to us like around the financial crisis we were working on Dungeon Hero um, and unfortunately our publisher at the time ran out of money because they were there they had um, their investors I think went bust and so that just trickled down to us so as the, the people at the end of the chain we got the money last we had no money and that was a really really hard time for us we that's the only time we've really had to let people go and shrink right down um, and we all you know I think we've survived it so the positive is we've we didn't fold and which is unusual in the games industry because there's lots of lots of companies fold um, so that made us a lot stronger I think it also made us um, consider the idea of self-publishing which was coming around at that time and also the online titles as well so like Stronghold Kingdoms and now Romans Age of Caesar um, are things that give us a constant cash flow so we're not sitting there beholden to a publisher and at the vagaries of them not paying us or the financial crash stopping them from paying us. I mean, I, you know, the, uh, the period around the financial crash was incredibly stressful three years for everyone involved mm -hmm. um, and, a, and a lot of hard work. But I, I think it's the closest we've come again to almost those first years with Stronghold when we're starting from scratch. It was a smaller team, but the pressures were off a little bit because we didn't have to find so much money to kind of to fund it. And also it gave us a little bit more freedom. So we kind of got back a little bit of that kind of early days spark, I think. And that allowed us to look at um, also different ways of working and different ways to build games like Stronghold Kingdoms, which is a totally different sort of style of game. It lives on servers and databases and it's, a, it's got its own complexities, but it gave us that f freedom to kind of create again, I think from scratch. Whereas before we'd been a little bit going through the same motions of, not go through the motions, but before we'd been making the same game, but with different advancements and things like that. Mm -hmm. when, the, when the crash happened and we had to restart, it was almost like we were rising like a phoenix from the ashes. Is that it is absolutely slick, mm -hmm. first and foremost. It brings, brings us back a little bit to some of the um, early stronghold ideas of, of castle life, some of the simulation stuff. It keeps the basic gameplay, but it adds a really interesting new layer onto the top. And I'm just hoping that the fans like that. Yep, I mean, we've seen loads of um, really nice pictures and photos and wedding shots come in with, with Stronghold music and Stronghold theme, this, that and the other. Mm -hmm. uh, tips, don't know, always more wood needed. Always more wood needed. Grand, and we'll finish there. Thank you very much, Simon.